Welcome to the August Wellness Webinar. As Kristen said, my name is Alma Pham. I'm a health promotion consultant with HealthNet, and I'll be your presenter today. My colleague Kristen Kaler is also on the line to assist with the webinar. And I have a few housekeeping items to review before we begin. So the first one is <clears throat> all participants are muted upon entering the webinar to avoid any background noise. And if you wanna change your audio setting, please click on the join audio icon that's um, shown on the screenshot. And then at the end of the webinar, there will be a quick four question anonymous survey. Please help us out in completing the survey. Your feedback is valuable in developing these webinars. And the last thing is, this webinar <clears throat> is recorded, and Kristen will send out the recording link to everyone who registered for this webinar. And if you're having technical difficulties, feel free to chat directly to Kristen. So to open that chat box, you're gonna hover over the Zoom toolbar at the top of the screen, and you'll see a chat box icon up here there. You're gonna click on that icon, and it should just pop up and it'll look just like what you see here on the screenshot. Kristen will receive your messages in real time and she'll respond to your message in the order that she receives them. And then before we dive in, I'm gonna share our disclaimer. The information provided in this presentation is intended solely for the general information of the audience. It is not medical advice and shall not replace consultation with your physician or other qualified health provider. If you have any health-related questions or problems, please seek the advice of your physician or other qualified health provider. So today I'll talk about the benefits of acupressure. And please excuse me in advance if I mute myself during the presentation. Uh, to clear my throat or sip on tea as I'm recovering from a bit of congestion. Thank you. And so at the end of this presentation, I hope to provide some education on the acupressure modality itself, um, ways it can be self-applied and some common uses. First, let's talk about complementary medicine. What is complementary medicine? Well, complementary medicine is any range of medical therapies that fall beyond the scope of conventional medicine, but it can be used alongside in the treatment of disease and illness. So the use of complementary and alternative medicine is actually on the rise. And acupuncture and acupressure is a form of complementary medicine. And it shares the list with things like relaxation techniques or meditation, tai chi or yoga, massage. And then of course we have acupressure and acupuncture. So what is acupressure? Well, acupressure is a 5,000 year old healing art. And it's actually the third most popular method for uh, treating pain and illness in the world. What acupressure does is it's a method of sending a signal to the body to turn on, if you will, its own healing process. And the goal of acupressure is to encourage the movement of chi or life energy throughout the body. And the belief is if there's a blockage in the flow of energy, it can lead to um, illness. And acupressure practitioners refer to this as stagnation. And acupressure is believed to clear these blockages and with it increase circulation and um, bring improved flow of chi to the muscles and to the organs. Acupressure is also believed to help provide relief with different ailments. However, what acupressure is not 
is a substitute for medical care. And so again, uh, this is a form of complementary medicine. So just as blood vessels carry blood throughout the body, um, acupressure uses meridians. And meridians are uh, distinct channels that connect acupressure points um, to each other. And it circulates the chi throughout the body. And you'll find the acupressure points, they lie underneath um, major muscle groups or near bony structures. So that's how practitioners locate the points. And they're identified by referring to um, anatomical landmarks. And when the stimulation through acupressure is applied, um, it can be applied on one or several of these points. A signal is sent um, to other parts of the body. So as a metaphor, um, picture an office copy machine. Uh, the paper jam represents the chi blockage. And sometimes in order to find where the paper um, is jammed, you have to follow the path in which the paper travels inside the machine. And then once you find where the paper is jammed and you remove that mangled piece of paper, um, then the copy job can finally continue. So in acupressure, in order to find that acupoint where there's stagnation, you have to follow the meridians. And then once the acupoint is cleared from blockage, chi energy can continue to flow. So acupressure, not to be confused by acupuncture, which are sort of the same, but different. Um, and so to sh show you the difference with uh, acupressure, you usually use like your fingers, your palm, or you can use a tool and it's applied on top of the skin um, with pressure. Whereas with acupuncture, it uses thin needles and it's applied by puncturing or inserting the needle into the skin. So for the sake of self-application, I'm gonna be focusing on acupressure. And although acupressure is generally very safe and gentle, there are some precautions. So you want to avoid performing self-acupressure on abdominal points if you don't have professional training. And if you're pregnant, you want to avoid acupressure unless it's performed by a licensed practitioner. And that's because some acupressure points can cause premature labor. And third, you want to avoid performing acupressure on areas where the skin is broken, has been um, recently injured, or if you've had recent surgery in that area. And this um, can include like varicose veins or any cancerous tumors in the area. So next I'm gonna go over common uses for self-acupressure. So almost one in five adult Americans suffer from some type of anxiety and about 37% of individuals will actually seek treatment for their anxiety while approximately 63% of people may continue to struggle alone. So scientific uh, research has found that acupressure can have positive effects on depression and anxiety. And there has been several studies about the effectiveness of acupressure with positive qualitative and quantitative data. So on this first box, in a study in 2012, um, which was published in the Journal of Perianesthesia, there were 70 subjects who were experiencing anxiety before having abdominal surgery um, that received acupressure. So half of them were provided acupressure on true acupressure points, and then the other half served as the control group and received acupressure on fake points. And then both groups 
actually reported a reduction in pre-surgical anxiety levels. So beyond the placebo effect, researchers found a significant difference in their pulse rate, their temperature, their respiration rate, and even their blood pressure for the subjects that received acupressure on the true acupoints. And then on the second box, a study in 2018, uh, they found similar results. The researchers found that acupressure applied to the yin tang point for five minutes was effective at relieving anxiety for expecting mothers that were about to undergo C-section. So let's look at some acupoints um, on the next slide. And I'll provide instruction on how to locate the acupoints. Feel free to follow along. You may or may not feel anything happening as we're lo locating these acupoints. Um, it will take practice on finding the exact spot, um, the time needed to hold an acupoint before um, a blockage release um, can vary for each individual. And mindfulness and intention is key during the application of acupressure. So after locating the acupoints together, I encourage that you give it a try on your own. All right, let's get started. So the uh, yin tang, this is the acupoint that was used during the C-section study. Um, it's located at the midpoint between your eyebrows. That's also called the uh, third eye. And doing acupressure on this point can help relieve stress and anxiety. So to find this point, you're gonna place your thumb or your forefinger between your eyebrows. So you're gonna find that third eye. And then you're gonna apply pressure in a circular motion on the acupoint. And this can be for up to five to 10 minutes. And then the pressure should be gentle and it shouldn't cause any discomfort. So if you feel that you're inflicting headache, um, decrease the pressure. And people with anxiety disorders, um, they frequently have intense, excessive, and persistent fear um, about everyday situations. So often um, anxiety disorders involve like repeated episodes of intense anxiety or fear or even terror that comes suddenly and it can reach a peak within minutes. So people may avoid going about their daily lives in order to prevent these levels of anxiety by maybe like staying at home. And this may cause a lot of uncomfortable um, physical sensations. So some of these sensations can include panic attacks, um, post-traumatic stress disorder, obsession and compulsions, uneasiness, nausea, shortness of breath, and even sleep-related problems. So the acupoint called the Great Surge is located on the top of the foot. And then performing acupressure on this point can help with panic attacks. So to find this point, uh, you're gonna place your finger between the tendons of the big and the second toe. And then you're gonna slide down about an inch from the base of the toes. And you're gonna press deeply into this area for one to two minutes while breathing deeply. And if you're like, say at a public area and you know you don't wanna be seen grabbing on to your foot to uh, relief like a panic attack or something, you can also use your big toe or your heel from the opposite foot for a more discreet application. So it'll look like you're kind of stepping on your own foot. <laughs> Can acupressure help with depression? Um, acupressure helps calm the middle of the brain, um, which is an area called the hypothalamus. And so it signals the pituitary gland, which is also in the brain, to release hormones known as cortisol, which is released from the adrenal glands. And if cortisol remains in chronically high levels, it can contribute to depression symptoms. And when this area is calmed, the stress system produces less cortisol. So I have a little note here, the hypothalamus is often on overdrive in people who are depressed. 
So there is an acupressure point that can help with uh, grief and depression. The acupoint called letting go is located on the upper portion of the chest, which is about uh, three fingers uh, width below the collarbone. And holding these acupoints on both sides can facilitate letting go of uneasy emotions. So when you've located the acupoint, you're going to apply deep but comfortable pressure. And so this is a, a multi a multi part uh, release. You're going to look forward. You're going to inhale slowly and deeply, and then you're going to gradually release your fingers off the acupoint while lifting your chest and then tilting your head back. So what this would look like is um, envision lifting your heart towards the cloud. When you when you do that action, you release your uh, fingers from the acupoint. You're gonna hold your breath for a few seconds. And then when you exhale, your chest and your head returns back to the starting position. And then your fingertips return back into the acupoint. So kind of envision when you release your fingers from the acupoint, that's, that's the body releasing um, the emotion. And then after you've released the emotion, you return back to starting position and then the fingers go back to the acupoint. And you can repeat this exercise four to five times. Can acupressure help with insomnia? Um, acupressure can improve sleep by promoting relaxation and rest. There are studies um, using acupressure to treat insomnia and the studies found similar results to medication um, but without the harmful side effects um, like tolerance, addiction, neurological toxicity, and excessive sedation. So if you're uh, if you have insomnia and it's not associated with any other underlying medical condition, acupressure can help induce sleep. So to locate the spirit gate acupoint, you're gonna find the crease on your outer wrist, just below your pinky finger. And then you're gonna feel for a small hollow space in this area. You're gonna hold that point for two to three minutes and you can repeat the same area on both of your wrists. And this is something that you can do, say like, you know, when you're, when you're lying in bed after you've completed your your nighttime ritual um, to go to sleep. Can acupressure help with pain? When the um, acupoints for pain are stimulated, there's parts in the nervous system that's also stimulated to relieve pain. And these symptoms can include uh, headaches, fibromyalgia, musculoskeletal pain, post-surgery recovery, sciatica, and even TMJ. So um, pain, while often considered physical, can contribute to anxiety and restlessness. There are two common acupoints uh, that you can use for pain, discomfort, and body aches. So the first acupoint is called um, Hegu, which is located in the soft fleshy area between the bones of your thumb and the forefinger. Um, I'm sorry, the index finger. And um, you want to avoid this acupoint if you're pregnant because um, this is one of those acupoints that can cause premature labor. And uh, this acupoint is handy, um, say when you're getting un like an uncomfortable procedure done, so for example, um, a friend of mine did self acupressure on this point while they were getting their braces tightened. Um, I, I had another friend that gets, uh, that puts pressure on this point um, when they're receiving a tattoo uh, and, and they swear by it. Uh, the second acupoint is called Zongzu and it's used for temporal headaches. 
Um, you can also use it for if you have shoulder and neck tension and upper back pain. And this acupoint is located in the groove between the knuckles of the pinky and the ring finger. Uh, the next acupoints are commonly used specifically for headaches. And so the first one here is um, called the, uh, the Feng Chi, which is located in the soft fleshy area where the neck muscles connect to the base of the skull. In addition to headaches, this point is recommended for um, migraines, eye blurriness, um, and fatigue. The next acupressure point is called the uh, Zhanjing, which is located in that muscular area of the shoulder known as the upper trapezius muscle, um, which is between the shoulder and the neck. And you want to apply pressure to the shoulder muscle with your index and middle finger to the opposite uh, shoulder if you're going to do it on yourself. So it'll almost look like you're crossing your arms in front of you. And then with your fingers, you're going to reach for the acupoints. And this is used for uh, neck stiffness and shoulder tension as well. And I uh, also highlighted that you do not use this point um, if you are pregnant. Okay, so I just went over quite a lot of common acupressure points. I picked two for us to do for practice. So let's get started. So how to apply self-acupressure. Um, first, let me talk about how to apply self-acupressure. We wanna get into a position that's comfortable so you can relax. We'll give everyone a minute to get into that comfortable position. And then you're gonna breathe deeply. You're gonna breathe gently and slowly throughout the treatment. And after you've located the acupoint, you're gonna use the finger pad or the palm to self massage and then and stimulate each point. You're gonna start with light pressure and add deep pressure slowly. And then you're gonna focus on the sensation. And the best way um, for me is like to, to close my eyes and then you're gonna apply the pressure on the point for about 40 seconds and for some individuals, they may find um, they need to hold the point longer. Um, and we're gonna repeat that about three times for each point. You can either press and hold or use a circular motion. And there may be some slight discomfort and tension at the point, but it should never be painful. So you want to adjust the amount of pressure accordingly. So now I wanna go ahead and give you a minute to relax in that comfortable position and remind you to avoid holding your breath. Um, sometimes we hold our breath because we, we get so in tune with, um, with the sensation, but you wanna breathe slowly throughout the treatment. Right, here we go. So we're gonna practice acupressure for upper body tension. And this is great to do when you're feeling tension on your neck, your shoulders and your upper back. So first we're gonna locate the acupoint using the finger pad to self-massage and stimulate the Zongzu acupoint. And this is located on the groove formed by the tendons of the pinky finger and the ring finger. So at the top of the finger, we're gonna locate that, that knuckle between the pinky and the ring finger. And so you can use the first image for reference I like to use my index finger, but you can use any finger that you feel comfortable with. And then on the second image, so you'll see that the, th the thumb is displayed on the acupressure point. You're gonna go with what feels more comfortable for your hand. And then once you've found that point, you're gonna stay right there. So you wanna start with light pressure. Ask yourself, how does this point feel? And there might be slight discomfort and tension at the point, but it should not be painful. If there is pain, 
Again, you want to adjust the amount of pressure accordingly. And if there is no pain, go ahead and just add deeper pressure slowly. And then now that you've located the point, close your eyes and focus on the sensation between the acupressure point and your finger pad. I'll give you a moment to be mindful of what that feels like. So you can either press and hold or use a circular motion. And you're going to continue to breathe in slowly and deeply through your nose and exhale slowly and steadily as if you're blowing through a straw. Go ahead and take another breath. And go ahead and release your touch on the acupoint. So this is a moment before we try this again. Think about what kind of sensation you experience. Think about the pressure that you apply. You know, was, the, was the pressure enough? Was it too much? And on the second go, you can make the adjustment. So again, we're going to go ahead and find that acupressure point between the pinky and the ring finger. Once you've found that point, you're going to apply gentle pressure. You can either press and hold or use your circular motion. Go ahead and again, close your eyes and continue to breathe in slowly and deeply through your nose and exhale slowly through your mouth as if you're blowing through a straw. We'll do this in three breaths. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale, and exhale. Go ahead and release your touch on the acupressure point. So these are just some notes on applying this, this acupressure point. And again, um, Kristen will be sending out the recording so you can reference this if you should choose to try this on your own. All right. So next, let's practice an acupressure point for uh, fatigue, headaches, and migraines. So first, we're going to interlock your hands um, with your palms cupping the back of your head. You're going to use your thumbs to locate the acupressure point, uh, Feng Shi, which is located where the neck muscles attach to the base of the skull. And once you've found the spot, you're gonna start with light pressure and add deep pressure slowly. And again, there may be slight discomfort and tension at these points, uh, maybe one more than the other, but it should not be painful. And if it is, you want to adjust the amount of pressure accordingly. Once you've located the point and your fingers are in position, go ahead and close your eyes and focus on the sensation between the acupressure point and your finger pad. You can either press and hold or use a circular motion. Again, remember to breathe slowly and deeply. So you're going to take a deep breath, inhale, and exhale through your mouth as if you're blowing out of a straw. Inhale, and exhale. So there are many extensive studies conducted with this acupressure point in scientific literature. Um, 
in neuroimaging studies, stimulation of this point has been shown to affect systems in the brain that can cause the effect, um, that can affect the body's response to stress. Go ahead and slowly release your touch on the acupressure point. These are little notes to locate the acupoint. So some other common therapeutic methods used to stimulate acupoints include uh, laser acupuncture and cupping, which was made popular with pro athletes um, in the Olympics. And acupressure can be combined with deep tissue massage or breathing techniques. And I've, uh, I've seen acupressure used in, um, in combination with, with other um, self-care. So I'll discuss acupressure combined with breathing techniques and massage, uh, massage since these methods can also be done as part of self-care without additional equipment. Since um, acupressure on its own does not involve massage strokes or use creams and oils, um, acupressure itself falls under the category of body work. Um, acupressure combined with massage strokes can be done to release tension and increase circulation in the body. So for example, um, if you arrive to a massage appointment and you have difficulty relaxing, you can perform self-acupressure prior to your appointment. Or um, your massage therapist, if they're trained in acupressure, can begin the session with addressing the acupoints for relaxing and calming the mind to allow you to be present in receiving um, massage. During the uh, massage session, your trained massage therapist can use acupressure to help release muscle tension. Um, and if you prefer not to receive deep tissue massage or the area you want addressed is not ideal for deep tissue massage. And then after the massage session, acupressure can help ground you, um, which is an important way to end a massage session. Grounding ourselves helps us to be more relaxed, release anxiety and uneasy feelings, and it brings you back to the present. So acupressure with breathing techniques. Breathing detoxifies and releases the toxins. So your body releases 70% of its toxins through breathing. And then breathing also releases tension. So your body constricts when it's angry. Um, and it also constricts when it's scared and when it's stressed. So when you breathe deeply, your body gets the oxygen it needs and then tension is reduced. Breathing also brings clarity. So paying attention to your breath relaxes your body and mind. And lastly, breathing relieves pain. So breathing helps clear uneasy feelings to help ease pain. So I went over many acupoints today and I wanna summarize four key points on acupressure. So it can be used to restore vitality, address pain, headaches, insomnia, and uneasy emotions. If you're pregnant, you want to avoid certain acupoints. The meridians are pathways that connect the acupoints to each other, as well as to the internal organs. And then combined with breathing, it changes the chemistry in our body by releasing toxins and tension. So if you found acupressure to be interesting and something you wanna practice on yourself, um, pointfinder.org helps identify acupoints for um, specific parts of the body that you can select from the list. And if you have a smartphone or tablet, it's like having an acupoint dictionary.
So I have a question um, for everyone. Uh, if you can please chat your response on the um, on the chat box. What are you currently doing for self care? And then Kristen, since I'm sharing my screen and I can't see their responses, can you name a few of the most popular ones? Sure. Um, some people are saying long walks, yoga, massage, taking PTO. Some people are saying not much. Okay. Some people are saying um, listening to music, exercising, um, doing puzzles, taking hot baths, spending time with family and friends, um, cooking, reading, um, continue to attend the webinars, praying, <laughs> reduce uh, sugar intake, Pilates. Yeah, so we have quite a quite a range here. Yeah. So actually, there's a lot to do for self-care. <laughs> Sometimes <laughs> we just mention like two or three things, but going through this list, quite a few people gave me some ideas. I know like a body scrub. Oh, more webinars like this. That's great. Thank you for attending. <laughs> Excellent. So if, uh, if you don't currently have um, like a self-care routine, um, yeah, those were some excellent, um, excellent self-care uh, actions. So I want to share a little statistic here, self-care in a post-pandemic world. There are U.S. adults, so about 80% say they will be more mindful about practicing self-care regularly once the pandemic is over. So how are we doing? Um, so nearly three in five or 59% of people will only practice self-care if they feel stressed. And then more than seven in 10 or 72% of people like to use self-care as a reward after a long, tough week. And respondents cited that these benefits of self-care, such as self-confidence, boost, increased productivity and happiness um, were major contributors to their self-care routine. Um, many people do get caught up in the day, um, like day-to-day -day responsibilities, that they don't prioritize time to take care of themselves. Uh, however, placing importance on activities that encourage relaxation can make you better equipped physically, mentally, and emotionally to face life's daily stressors. And so on that note, these next slides are programs that help HealthNet members stay on track with their health. Our members can find wellness programs and other resources when logging into uh, their HealthNet account. Our health risk assess assessment, which is called the Real Age Test, um, can help you find, um, find out how your health aligns with your true age. And you can also find our wellness programs within the online wellness center. My strength. Um, is a proven tool that's very effective in helping to manage our mind, body, and spirit. Uh, this online program is also available in app form to access your smart um, to access through your smartphone, so that you can have support at home and whether or not you're on the go. And it can help you learn how to reduce stress, anxiety, depression, or substance abuse. It's open to everyone, so HealthNet and community members have different links, which is embedded on this slide. And tackling new health goals can be challenging, um, but you don't have to face it alone. So there are coaches that can help you prioritize your goals, strategize a plan, and support you through your journey. And if you have health concerns, HealthNet members can call the nurse advice line to speak to a registered nurse. And you can save money and take advantage of our member discounts. Uh, members can receive discounts on Weight Watchers, chiropractic, and acupuncture services, as well as eye care, hearing aids, and even fitness club discounts. And if you're not a HealthNet member, 
um, please do check with your health plan to see if they offer similar programs, services, and discounts. HealthNet also offers a variety of online health challenges through our wellness platform. Um, so in September, we have st the Step It Up Challenge. And so we hope that you would uh, check that challenge out. Um, we also have different challenges that are ongoing. Um, so we have a few listed here. Some of our ongoing monthly challenges would be like Brady said, summer, move to snooze, digital detox, smart snacks, and every step counts. It looks like I lost my slide. Sorry, a little technical difficulty there through the end. All right, so our upcoming wellness webinar, it will be the micro workouts to work out efficiently. That will be on September 20th at the same time, 12 to 1245. And the topic includes find out how to effectively train your whole body and then you get to learn micro workouts that can help maintain exercise consistency, reduce overuse injuries that can lead to better mental health. So I hope you'll join us next month. And until next time, thank you everyone for attending.